there, welcome to Hold It Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel in 2023, the year of. I wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, in the last couple videos you saw, I got the networking card going on the 4000 and on the 1200, right? Okay. And it was great, so I could go on the internet, use eyebrows and download stuff. But what I wanted to show you real fast was one of the cool things that you do after that. And that is you get up your SMBFS networking install. I'm gonna put down in the description below the link to get you to where you need to go. I wanna tell you right now that the SM, <laughs> the SMBFS that is on AnyNet is actually out of date. There is a newer one that I'm gonna link down to that is the one I am using. Uh, it's really simple, it's, it's just the single uh, SMBFS file that you put in your C uh, folder on your Amiga and then you use SMB mounter and configure it to map your shares. Chris Edwards has done a video on this, by the way, I'm gonna put a link to that in the description as well. I've actually shown this a little bit as well too, but really it's just once all that's running, you go up uh, onto SMB mounter and one of the things you do is you tell it where your SMBFS is actually at. In my case, it's right there in C. And you click save and then you add a new connection. And if you look here, we'll go to uh, Amiga data. I've created Amiga data, right? We'll go down, we'll click edit. And right there, it's just the host name is actually your server name. The service name is the shared folder. And then you've got your username and password. I actually just make up. These are all local accounts, by the way, so don't freak out that I'm showing this to you. And then you make a username and password that's simple. And then you give it a volume name. The volume name was how the share is going to show up on your Amiga. There it is. You click OK and you click you know, the mount button, now it says unmount, right? But once you do all that, you get your Amiga share. And now your Amiga is looking at a network folder. Now, in my case, I was not able to use my uh, NAS. I have a NAS set up for all my computers to look at. And I was gonna use uh, that, but my NAS, even though it does support SMB1, uh, it was this SMB1 uh, thing on the Amiga just couldn't load it up, it wouldn't work. But we found a newer version, not on AmyNet, that I'm putting in the link below, in the description below. And that one does claim to support SMB FS2, which might make it more compatible. But even further, there's an even newer version of SMB FS based off an Amiga OS 4.0 version that fully supports SMB FS or SMB 2.0 and 3.0. It's a, basically, uh, they modified the OS 4.0 version to work with Workbench 3. Now, I haven't even gotten into that one because it does require a little bit of extra work and it might not work with SMB Mounter. It's actually amazing SMB Mounter works even with this slightly newer version I'm using because it was, it's you know, a program that was written as a front end for SMB FS and it's not even aware of the new commands that are available in the version I'm using, but it works. So Q, why, that's great. So now I, I can sneaker net, I don't have, well, I don't have to sneaker net anymore. I can have all my Amigas looking at the same shared folder to grab files from. So it's a great way to just get data quickly back and forth between the two. I will say that this um, PCMCA 1200 card is uh, not the fastest. Uh, honestly, it does around dual ISDN modem speeds. It does around 128K a second average. And it is going into a proper 10 slash 100 switch. There's a lot of cables on the floor down there, as you can see. And then that goes into, that switch then goes into my massive 10 gigabit switch. So it's all working happily. Now the XSurf, of course, is much faster. It's pooling in around 400K, sometimes 500K a second. And it's rumored that with the newer version of SMBFS, the hybrid version from Amiga OS 4.0, you know, to work in 3.0, that might even be faster, like 700K a second. But I'm not, I don't have that version running. The point is, yeah, that's cool now. You've got the ability for all your Amigas to see a shared folder. Um, and by the way, what I didn't tell you is that, so if, you, if, I'm, if I don't have a shared folder on my NAS, how am I doing this? I shared a folder on my workstation PC. So I have a workstation PC. This is my, you know, office here, right? It's got all my cool Amiga stuff. Hi, hi, old Amigas I haven't used in a while. I'm sorry, I will get back to you. Um, but I use the, the shared folder on my work PC uh, using, you know, standard Windows uh, file sharing, using SMB 1.0, which you do have to actually manually turn on in Windows 10, by the way. It's just, uh, you gotta go to Windows features and uh, turn that on. You can look that up. Uh, that's boring with PC stuff. I don't like to talk about that. This is an Amiga channel. Anyway, we get that up and running and now I've got the share so that now when I uh, load up Lightwave on these machines, so on this 4000, I've got the Babylon 5 station loaded and then over here in my 1200, 
when I fire up Lightwave, okay, 1200 is a little slower as we all know. Now remember this 1200 is in full 256 color mode. So it's, it's a, uh, <laughs> asking a lot. But the cool thing is, see how I just clicked on that, that scene file there to load this that you see over here? What Lightwave didn't do was ask me, hey, where's the object at? Where's the images at? You run into this a lot when you're sneaker netting files back and forth between your Amigas. You can run into this problem. Or even more importantly, if you're using WinUEE on your PC and you're using um, Lightwave over there and you're creating Amiga content, you're like, okay, I need to get this Amiga content uh, over onto my Amigas. You sneaker net it over and then you go to load the files up and you know, they're asking you, where's the object now? Where's the images at? It's just, it's just a pain in the butt. Yeah, you could try and create a common shared folder name and all the systems and that does help, but you know what? You're gonna forget to do that or you're gonna be loading up old content. But more importantly, with all of these Amigas pointing to one file location for all of the Lightwave content, everyone is always in sync. No one's gonna have to be manually copied over, okay? And that's huge. And that includes the, the Windows PC back there running WinUAE. I can create stuff in Lightwave over there and all of these folks are gonna be seeing that same content, right? And by the way, you saw how fast that 1200 loaded this Babylon 5 scene, right? So you saw in real time, uh, it's network speed. That's not, that was actually, wasn't, that was probably faster than 128K a second. This is a really beefy scene. So that's it. That was the joy of being able to uh, get these guys online. Now it was two phases, right? It was getting network cards in them. So I have access to the internet and then it was getting the SMB FS installed and SMB mounter so I could start mounting shares. What would be the third thing you could do now that all these Amigas are looking at the same point of content, right? They're all looking in the same spot for content. What does that mean I could do next? ScreamerNet, LWSN, maybe, finally, get all these Amigas rendering together, possibly even WinUAE. I mean, that seems crazy, but yeah, maybe. I don't know. I've done some initial investigations into it and um, there might be some bugs that might prevent that from working, but just a heads up, that might be possible. And no, I haven't forgotten the 3000. Actually, I have a XSurf ready to go in there next and it'll get online with the rest of these. So I hope you enjoyed this quicker video. Actually, is it that quick? I don't know if it's that quick. And you know, fully networked Amigas, why bother? Well, when you're a lightwave nerd like me, especially, uh, th this is super cool now because these guys just, everyone's using the same content and that's, that's awesome. All right, I'm done with this video. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna tease you and not show the actual render. So there's the Babylon 5 station on the 4000, and there's the Babylon 5 station on the 1200. Let's see how long the 1200 took. Uh, 12 minutes, 37 seconds, and the 4000 took 10 minutes, 21 seconds. So a little bit of a difference. Now, the reason for that difference could be multiple factors. Um, this is a, an RC5, or I'm sorry, a Rev5 chip. This is a Rev1 chip. So the Rev5s and, and Rev6s are a little faster by default. There is also a chance there could be some thermal throttle thing going on with this 1200. I don't know if Motorola 060 is actually thermal throttle. That might be uh, too, too far in the past for such a technology to exist. But yeah, as you can see, the top is off this. I had to put a heat fin, heat sink on the uh, 060 chip which kind of lifts the keyboard up, and I put a, a secure uh, barrier there so there's no shorting out or anything. Although, the heat sink on the 060 does sort of touch the aluminum frame on this keyboard, which is gonna be yet another thermal mask for it to use. But anyway, there you go. Not a huge difference though. I mean, it's two minutes of frame, yeah, over the course of uh, a couple hours that, that will add up, but there you go. I didn't want to tease you.